<coughs> Hello, sir. Good morning, Gauri. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Thank you. Tell me. Tindi alla hai ta? Okay. Yes. No, finished. Finished. Good. Finished. Good. Um, okay. Good. So we are live now. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is doing good at this uh, difficult times. You know, uh, things are not okay, but I think uh, being positive is very, very important. At the same time, do what you like to do. And I enjoy, thoroughly enjoy what I do. I've just been uh, in uh, Agumbe and came back and it is such a beautiful place. Uh, and uh, today, again, it's an exciting day because today is the Nature Conservation Day celebrated throughout the world. And on this occasion, we have a very, very special guest. Uh, so I wish you all the World uh, Nature Conservation Day. And uh, so today, the special person, according to me, Mr. Manoj Kumar, is an idol in many, many ways. He is, uh, his impeccable academic record boasts of top ranks, gold and silver medals at every milestone of his life. I, I, I don't get nervous in the forest. I don't get nervous in front of King Cobras. But when I bump into people who get gold medals or first rank or second rank, I become very nervous. So today I'm nervous, guys. On live, I'm nervous because Manoj Kumar is right in front of me. He's, he looks like a principal to me right now. So, <laughs> so he's, he's been a leader throughout. Uh, he was a sports secretary at the University of Agricultural Science in Darwad and served as a president at Rotary Club Coimbatore and uh, Assistant General Secretary at uh, Indira Gandhi National Forest Academy, Dehradun. So he's contributed to five books, six scientific journals, and several popular articles. Uh, now, that's just the tip of the iceberg, uh, iceberg to his introduction. There's lots, but uh, I might take about 25 minutes to introduce. So I'm going to keep it very short. And uh, so I met, I met uh, Mr. Manoj Kumar in 2009, if I'm, I remember right, sir, in Dandeli, I think I came, so, came there to give a talk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So since uh, then, I've been enam enamored by his uh, dynamism and fascinated, always fascinated when he speaks. And uh, I get inspired. Uh, and he does give really inspirational speeches and conservation action. Uh, I'm sure we're going to talk only a couple of them of his conservation actions, but there's, there's many more. I should you guys should catch up with him sometime next. I mean, whenever you get a chance. So as a good citizen and as a wildlife biologist, I feel proud that such eminent personality is a, our chief conservative forest. That is a Karnataka Forest Department. Uh, it's, an, it's my honor to introduce him and give him with a, and have him with us today. So I'm sure he will leave many of you inspired to connect with nature. So thank you very much for accepting our invite and being here. I know you busy schedule, so whatever you're doing, but we really appreciate your time. Thanks, Gauri. It's indeed my pleasure, you know, talking to the people and especially when it comes to nature, I always love. So yes, I know yes. the principal was like a student, you know, in front of. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a journey, yeah. the learning. In nature, you know, yeah. you cannot make your principal. It will always. No, make you humble and then uh, a student like exactly so every time i catch up with you every time i attend your talk or uh, i learn so much you know which we we don't get to so the main uh main point to have you here for the larger audience they know very little what forest department does and what the conservation activity is happening what happens is they interact with those researchers or the so-called the social media active people so they get to know only what they are doing. So my point is, Karnataka Forest Department is doing such a great job. You know, I've I've worked with like almost uh, 17 different states for my PhD for my uh, permits. You know, I've interacted with 17 different forest departments in in uh, in uh, India. So I I find our department is doing much much better job. And uh, so I want them to know what you're doing. So. The screen is yours, so I'll disappear for some time, but I'll be right here. But uh, I don't want to occupy the screen space. The entire space is yours. Yeah. Thanks. And we'll take the questions later. Guys, uh, people who are listening, or please do spread this message and do shoot in questions for Mr. Manoj Kumar. I'm right here. We'll read, it, read out those questions later. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thanks, Gauri. Thank you. Good. 
Are you able to see my presentation? Yes. Let me, sir. Yes, uh, it came and went off. Ah, one minute, Can one minute. There are some, yes, yes. I did some mistake, actually. Yes, no worries, no worries. We have time. Yes. Perfect. Now we can see. Can you see? Sorry. Yes, yes, Are perfect. Yes, yes, perfect. Go ahead, sir. I'll be right here. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, I thank uh, Gauri for giving me this wonderful opportunity on this uh, wonderful day, uh, Nature Conservation Day, to talk to you and then try my best to connect you with the nature. It's a very interesting topic, in fact, which I am talking to you. Uh, and then the reason for why I'm talking to you is basically I am influenced by Stephen Jay Gold he is a US, United States uh, of America's uh, uh, very wonderful, uh, you know, ecologist and then uh, historian. So he gives this particular statement. We cannot win this battle to save species and environment without posing an emotional bond. I am very, I'm stressing once again here, emotional bond between ourselves and nature as well. For we will not fight to save what we do not love. So wonderful statement is has influenced me a lot, and then it really worked in the field. Whenever, wherever I worked with 22 years of my service, I found that whenever you connect people with nature, really it works in conservation and makes our life, either the bureaucrats or the you know, officers working in the field of conservation, it becomes very, very, very easy and then you know, kind of a, a simple and then quite satisfying at the end of the day. Then why I am talking this, you know, why I want that people should be connected? Are they really disconnected? I feel yes. You know, on most of the occasions, I feel people are quite disconnected with nature. That's the reason why we do not get the required support, what is required to conserve nature. To give a few examples, this is one uh, slide which I am showing where you have the Kodugu uh, Western Ghats, a very important district where the river Kaveri originates. And then the another photograph which you are seeing is uh, a KRS dam from where the water comes to Bangalore city. Why I'm showing this particular picture is that I live in Elanka in a Bangalore city and then in an apartment. And usually whenever we meet our neighbors, we usually meet either, either for a walk or while we are in a lift. So it, it so happened that I met one uh, a very good gentleman and then they're working in a central research institute. And then it was first meeting. So we had presentries exchanged. And then I he asked me who I am and what I do. Then I said, uh, I belong to Indian Forest Service and then uh, I am the Chief Conservative Forest of Madikeri, Kodogo. And uh, after listening to that, the, the you know, expression or the statement which he made really puzzled me. He said, what do you do there in Kodogo? I told I am a, I belong to Indian Forest Service, I am the Chief Conservative Forest in Kodogo and then he was not able to connect me with my profession and then my job. So I felt there is somewhere disconnect. So I wanted to know, I took a few seconds and then I thought I should connect him with me and my profession, my job. Then after taking a few seconds, I told uh, uh, my job or my primary responsibility is to ensure that you get your drinking water in your tap. Means ensuring your drinking water security. He was puzzled. I said, how can this guy sitting in Madikeri ensures my drinking water in my house? I had to tell him that you see the area, the forest which I'm managing in Kodugu are the catchment for the river Kaveri. And the tap in the you know, water you are getting in your tap is the Kaveri River. So the catchment is very, very important for you to get water as much as you need. And that's how if any mismanagement I do in Kodugu to that extent, you'll get less water in your tap. So then he could relate. He could relate that, oh, this guy left his family here next door and then he's working there in Madikeri, working for me or for the larger interest of the society. This disconnect I'm talking about means people do not know that the water they're getting in their house is somewhere it is coming from the forest or the Western Guards, which need to be protected, not just, you know, hugging some few trees in somewhere, some city. That's not the only job, but we also have the larger interest. So what I mean to say that people who go to Kodagu for picnic or for any purpose, they don't, they should realize, they should connect instantly that this is the landscape from where I'm getting my drinking water source. Until and as the people connect themselves with such kind of issues, I don't think conservation is that easy. So another incident I would like to share with you this lot of things, a lot of times, you know, a lot of articles appear in the media. This is unfortunately or fortunately in Canada. I'd like to share or translate that in English. 
one of the titles both are the same news same report about poaching of the you know elephant tusk in one of the articles it says title headline says that 70 lakh rupees worth of elephant tusks are seized in another article it says that elephant tusk seized two people arrested if this kind of articles appear in the media especially the first one where it says 70 lakh rupees worth of elephant tusks are seized what kind of message we are sending it to the society say tomorrow after a person who reads this particular article in a village and then sits and then an elephant enters in his village a tusker he will not see the elephant then he will only see the tusk and then he start calculating oh the photograph which appeared in the media was it larger will this fetch 25 lakhs or 30 lakhs 40 lakhs so he will see only the value in terms of money in the tusk not the elephant so this is a, like a, a kind of a, it promotes poaching and another article where it's very interesting that two people are arrested is a deterrent. It will act like a deterrent. What I mean to say is that even in the media, I have seen many times a disconnect. Means they're not able to appreciate what need to be written, what need not to be written. So this also I tried my best to educate the media people. And then a lot of times we have got a very good response from them. There's another in interesting slide which I'm going to show you. We have a Save Tiger campaign in Karnataka headed by another very leading actor and good friend of mine, Prakash Raj. When he was interacting with me on Saving Tiger campaign in Karnataka, I told in one of your movies, Son of Satyamurti, another lead actor, another fine actor, Upendra was wearing a, you know, kind of a pendant which was looking like a tiger claw. This is actually detrimental to the conservation of tigers itself. So he was, he was himself was shocked. He didn't know that there is something happened like that in his own movie. What I mean to say is that people don't, not even aware of what they are doing. In the you know in the in the guise of you know they may not be aware this basically there's something like an ignorance even here requires some connect so that's why education becomes a main important focus for me when it comes to conservation so then when i reported as a on first july 2006 as a deputy conservative forest in dandili wildlife sanctuary my main purpose i became to, to educate the people when i went to study the history of that uh, kendra district I basically tumbled upon a, a, another went very important and uh, uh, anect means a compilation of the information, Canara Gazetteer. It was published in 1883 by James Campbell. And then his particular you know, information is such a fantastic information and eye opener, which gave me the background of the area which I was dealing with. To tell you, Francis Buchanan, 11th March 1801, he travels the entire Canara and then he comes out with this, this particular statement. He says, throughout the forest of Sonda, Tigers and wild buffaloes are very numerous, but there are no elephants because elephants were not residents in Kendra at that time. Elephants were migrating from Mysore to Kendra and then they're getting back. So that's why there were more number of tigers and wild buffaloes than elephants, which people could hardly see. Now, Colonel Peton, he was a conservator in 1883 in Kendra. He writes, Kendra is the only one of the Bombay Kendra districts where tigers are found in many numbers. Then, what happened to those tigers which are found today? We find hardly eight to ten tigers in that particular landscape of Uttar Kannada, mainly because of this hunting. Why this hunting happened in those days? Because when you see a tigress with five half-grown cubs was shot near Tinai in 1878. In March 1882, a tiger and a tigress came together near Ellapur and were both killed. In April 1882, a tigress and a five cubs, about seven months old, were killed near Patoli and in Supa. Five cubs, five cubs is being mentioned and they are mentioned that they are adult cubs. It means you can imagine the abundance of you know, prey base there where tigress could feel that I can raise five cubs happily because there is a food availability. That was the health of those forests in 18 and 1800s, what I'm talking about. But British government had fixed a reward. If you kill a tiger, full grown tiger, you'll get 24 rupees, half grown tiger, 12 rupees and the cub, six rupees. Similarly for leopard also, a rate was fixed. When this rate was fixed for hunting a tiger or leopard, the result was really mind-boggling. Between 1856 and 1882, in about 27 years, 640 tigers, 640 tigers in 27 years were shot dead. This is on record. We don't know how many were killed off record. From 1878 to 1882, in five years, 214 leopards were shot dead in Canada. 1876-77, there was a famine and then the wild dogs were mercilessly killed and eliminated in Canada. So this was the precise reason why the 
population of tigers and then the large mammals in that particular landscape landscape has dwindled drastically so this was the landscape which i had inherited in 2006 as a deputy conservation forest canra i mean uh, dandeli wildlife sanctuary so i my challenge was basically to change the mindset of the people then i started working with the teachers and students then when i started working with the teachers and students really gave me a lot of you know quite rewarding experience in on one particular occasion we had this small uh, fawn uh, spotted deer fawn which was injured by a, a domestic means a, a dog so it was housed in a nature camp just close to a nature camp when we were conducting nature camp we had thought that we'll only involve the local school children so when we brought these children we also would like to mention here that that particular landscape of dandeli has a kunbi tribe kunbi tribe is basically non vegetarians but their tradition says that you cannot eat the domesticated animals meat so obviously you will be eating the wild animal meat this fact i knew since i had read through the gadgeter and all so during the bake tea break the children were playing with this particular fawn they are trying to feed this with the grass and they were touching they are spending a lot of time with the animal when they came back after the break we asked them a simple question we said how many of you have eaten the spotted deer meat children are children quite honest they raised their hands almost like 70 80% of the children they raised their hands they said we have eaten the meat of this spotted deer then we said that let us kill this particular spotted deer fawn today and then eat for dinner pin drop silent no child was ready to talk means it was like absolute silent we said why you know anyway this is going to die here we'll better eat uh, and then uh, for dinner no no sir please don't do that it's so cute so nice let us not kill it no anyway you go back and then eat you no spotted deer meat so better we kill he is this only so children say no no sir we will not eat something like that they informally express that they will not be eating and we forgot and the children went back and then uh, i also came back to my office i was busy with my routine work one day after a week or so one stranger was waiting in front of my office a middle aged man and he was waiting my office people told us sir since morning he is waiting for you and then he is not telling what for he has come I said, okay, let's not find. Then I'll take took him and then made him sit comfortably in front of me. And then I asked him, tell me what is it. Then straight away he asked me out to on my face. He said, what did you do to our children? I said, nothing. We had brought, take, taken them to a forest area and then we have showed them the forest. We gave them nice food and then nice accommodation. Nothing, not more than that. No, no, no. You have done something to our children. I said, tell me what has happened. Then the interestingly, what he said, these children neither they are eating nor they are allowing us to eat. I said, what? this spotted deer meat this was the impact of education when the child got you know connected with this spotted deer he decided as a child decided that he doesn't eat not only that he doesn't allow his parents also to eat that is the impact of education that is the impact of connecting people with nature when i realized this i was working on this hornbills in dandeli it's another beautiful place for the hornbills where we have four different species of fawn with like a common gray, Malabar gray, and then Malabar pied, as well as one of the beautiful birds like great Indian pied hornbills. On one occasion, I saw this pied hornbill was dead and then it was killed and then I was a bit disappointed. I was thinking about how to conserve this hornbills. Then I received an invitation from my school children who came to my nature camp and then they were undergoing the five days or a week's uh, nature camp. They would ask me to address these children, so I came. I thought I'll address uh, them. So when I was addressing them, I thought, uh, let me share the story of hornbills itself. Then I started telling that uh, children, you know hornbill. I Because the bird were ro roaming around there itself. Then I showed them and said, did you see this? Do you know what this bird is? Then one of the child told, uncle, it looks like a uh, toucan. Toucan is an American bird again. Of course, people were not knowing the native birds like hornbill. The problem is the, our alphabets. If you see our alphabets, most of the animals they know is giraffe, zebra, hippo, and all but they do not know the difference between sambar and spotted deer that's basically the fault in our education system so when they, that is the case they definitely cannot connect themselves with the native species which they are they are existing in their own backyard so i thought i'll start with the hornbill only i said this this is a beautiful bird and uh, this is like a farmer of the forest it you no know, it spreads the seeds across the forest and then sees that trees grow in the forest and uh, we consider it as like a farmer of our forest and hence we need to protect this particular bird and there is, this bird has a lot of lessons to teach the human beings because once they become, try to be husband and wife, they are very loyal to each other. And then they become, a made, made once they decide to make a family, they search the home 
and they clean the home and then they in a, in a big tree in a nest hole and then the female once is ready to lay the eggs she will go inside and then once the she you know goes inside the male and then female put together to seal this entire nest hole leaving only a small portion for the beak to be you know for taking the feed during this period the male will go far off places and then get the food not only for himself his wife and once the eggs are there and then incubation is over the when the chicks start growing that female you know the space becomes a constraint then this female hornbill sheds its all feathers becomes practically naked and then makes it like a cushion for the young babies to grow on that when this is happening especially this all happens during february march this period where the the forest of dandeli are a deciduous one the shed leaves so wherever this hornbill the male which is outside is going in such a food is clearly visible when it is clearly visible the farmers who do not have any work during summer months they sometimes indulge in hunting this bird once the kill the male bird is dead now the female who is waiting for this male to come with the food she is not going to get and she will also die also the egg was dead not only that that nest hole is never used by the future in future by any other bird so nest hole is lost entire family is lost so this is what is happening for the conservation of hornbills in this particular area after telling this story i left when i left <clears throat> i never thought that it has i don't know what kind of impact this particular story had made on the children but they after 5 6 days the teachers again called me said sir please come and then uh, grace the occasion of valedictory function closing ceremony i said see i already spoke to the children there is nothing i can speak much now uh, i think you can close the camp no no sir children want uh, without you coming there they don't want to leave the camp then i thought like i should go and meet the children so i came to meet the children when i came to meet the children children had enacted this beautiful play after i left them with the story they spent four five day and night and then wrote a beautiful story and then enacted in front of me the children's story was little different from what i said children's story was you know in the children story the first scene was like you know a villager is sitting and smoking a bd in front of his hut inside his his wife is you know trying to prepare some food or something this his wife calls him out see go to the forest and get the firewood to cook food then this man refuses no no that's your job i will not go to forest and get the food you only go and get it no she says no no i cannot go to the forest because if i go to the forest the forest guard has threatened me that he will put me behind bars so i am not going to the forest you only go and get it so reluctantly he goes to the forest to fetch the food i mean firewood then uh, he sees this bird when he is collecting firewood they will see a bird sitting on the top of the tree he'll kill that hornbill and then brings back along with firewood also this hornbill tells his wife cook the meat of this bird will eat and will have a party this entire thing is seen by the elephant that elephant is a hero for this children so he, he elephant comes and then talks to these two husband and wife he said you know what mistake you have done this is what mistake we have done we have come we have now kill this hornbill we are going to prepare the food come and join us also for the party the hornbill says no no that uh, elephant says no no you have done a great mistake you don't know what mistake you have done then the elephant takes this husband and wife to a nest hole where the female elephant is sitting usually in uttarakhand district the female hornbills are called kanka kanka looks like a feminine name so the children had chosen this name this elephant calls that kanka out kanka what are you doing inside is, no no i am waiting for my husband to come where he has gone he has gone to fetch lunch acha i don't think that he comes back see it's already 3 o'clock your lunch time is 1 o'clock no 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 sometimes it becomes late it sometimes it is uh, difficult to get the food so he might have gone far off places but he will come i don't think he'll come he must have run away with some other lady then she says no no i know him he'll come back i am sure he'll come back with the food i'm waiting here with his children so definitely he'll come back in the meantime this man and then the uh, woman who are holding the hornbill they realize that somewhere this hornbill which is in their hand is connected to the her husband then the elephant has no choice but she will elephant will reveal elephant will tell that no no your husband will never come back because he has been killed by this man then she start crying from inside and then this man says no 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 don't cry don't cry i will give you the food they say no 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 you cannot give a roti chapati and rice my food is totally different you won't be able to give me the food which i require then he says then uh, he, she says no you killed me, me and my children as well then this man says no don't worry i'll remove you 
from the nest hole you go and then feed your children at least you save your children then she says no i cannot do that because i have shed all my feathers i'm practically naked that itself takes 30 days to for me to come back to the life so no you killed my husband you killed me and my family and all when i saw this touching story children enacted i thought i should not leave this story at this stage so i had some volunteers working with me these volunteers i told this is the story the children played other day can you convert this into a street play so that in a local language so that we can showcase this entire story before the villagers around this area these volunteers were quite you uh, know good and then they immediately accepted my request and then they came out with a street play when they came out with the street play in some of the villages we played not more than or not less than 100 villages and then 100 shows and most of the time children adults everybody used to come and sit and watch our story on one occasion i witnessed to this a, like something around 65 70 year old man when that conversation between this hornbill and then the elephant was taking place and then the hornbill start crying that no you kill my husband and you are going to means i am going to die and my children also a aged man walks in the middle of the play and then with tears in his eyes he holds the act hand of a leading lead artist we didn't realize what he is doing whether he was wants us to stop this play or we didn't know then he said no i have killed this bird then i said uh, uh, what do you do now they said no no i didn't know that uh, killing one bird means killing entire family i will not kill here after not only that i will not allow anybody to kill i promise then this promise taking promise from villagers became our you know the, the climax at the end of the play then we have played almost like as i said 100 100 uh, odd villages and most of the villages are so sensitized today i am very happy to say that even today a lot of people call me to tell that there are hornbills roaming around freely why don't i come and see them so that was the impact when you connect people with the issues if you connect people with the nature i think conservation becomes a very 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 easy otherwise killing a hornbill has a has a very severe punishment but we never booked any case so far it means mere enforcement law doesn't serve the purpose of conservation but education does so when we played the street play then i thought i'll have a trail in dandeli and we prepared a booklet we were educating then all of a sudden i received a, a, a phone call from one leading uh, newspaper editor by name visheshwar bhat in 2010 after quite some time he wrote a beautiful article based on the story which i told you so far like in search of a beauty called hornbill in the forest of dandeli then i exchanged my email and you know, address and with him and i said i had submitted a proposal to karnataka government and then uh, to declare this area as a hornbill conservation reserve unfortunately it did not happen then he said i really appreciate your concern to declare that as a hornbill reserve let us try for this see here he again got instantly connected with the hornbill story and then he became my partner in the conservation then i of course exchanged series of emails and then the thing and he wrote another article can chief minister hear the call of that bird in february again in another couple of days then i write to him i say i am sure that the day is not far when this area is declared as a hornbill conservation reserve then he gives me a reply he says today i will contact cm and seek his reaction regarding hornbill conservation reserve can you believe cm of karnataka having n number of you know other responsibilities but media person says is an editor as i said will ask cm this particular question so he will ask cm when he is getting down from the flight in an airport belgam airport the reporters ask him what are you going to do about the hornbill conservation then cm immediately declares that i'll declare it as a hornbill conservation reserve then i get lot of emails and all it was like a dream come true for me then i send the information and then on 31st june 2011 that area of 52.50 square km gets declared as a conservation reserve it is a very beautiful area along the river on either side of the avery river abutting the dandeli and tiger reserve wonderful area now got declared as a hornbill conservation reserve this could happen only because that editor got connected and then things got you know easier then a lot of articles started appearing when i was the dcf of dandeli i had also inaugurated the nature club in uh, kaiga nuclear power plant i and kaiga nuclear power plant when i declared in 2007 8 uh, it was conducting regularly the census of birds in 2013 i have seen this in a, one of their census reports which appeared in the paper it says we had never seen so many hornbills here except one or two on rare occasions it means the hornbills were coming in large number after this particular efforts of educating people 
people start killing and the army population suddenly increased and then now you people come to dandeli to see the hornbills there the hornbill conservation workshops and then we also had huzu from bangalore to come to dandeli and then see the hornbills take beautiful pictures and write lot of stories in newspapers like you know as i said hornbills are the farmers of the forest and we have the now the regularly we are conducting the hornbill festival as well in dandeli then in this particular festival children are participating and i have seen beautiful paintings from school children and then now there is a statue in the circle about hornbill really it gives me tremendous satisfaction today that when i am talking to you to connect the uh, connect with nature only it is possible means conservation is possible if you are connected and that is possible when you really are aware and when you really get sensitized and that is possible only through education so it's another very important statement of derek jensen it's harder to fight for what you don't, don't love than for what you do and it's hard to love what you don't know you are missing it's harder still to fight an injustice you do not pursue as an injustice but rather the rather as just the way things are so once people get connected once people start loving the nature i think that work of the forest department and the forest officers becomes easier and then they simpler and then we will be collectively achieving the larger goal of conservation thank you so much and i hope i have tried to connect you with the nature and then with this my law uh, service uh, experience which i have had in during my course of uh, journey as a forest officer i stop uh, here and then i'll be very happy to you know answer to some of your questions and then uh, hopefully we'll have a, a very meaningful interaction good thank you very much sir that's really inspirational and i'm sure we'll take questions later uh let us a few more questions to come in and uh in the meanwhile uh, there's a video just to create more interest we have put a lot of pictures together and made a short video it's just one, one and a half minutes so in the meanwhile sure. let's run it and you stay there i'll stay here the video will be and then we'll take questions they're sending in more questions that is why that's a good compilation of pictures and videos one of our interns did that good so we ready to take questions sir yeah absolutely good. so i'll start from the beginning people said good morning good morning good morning so one mr adarsh m magadi says rightly said it is a problem our education system because of which people do not know the native species so he is just agreeing with uh, whatever you said 
because they don't know the difference between sambar and spotted pepper or you know sometimes people get confused with our snakes also they always talk about anacondas you know which is not there in india at all and the black mambas which are in africa so they don't talk about our, our own species which are killing people here you know anyway um, next one uh, mr raghavendra singh kushwa is asking what is the current scenario of wildlife trafficking in india yeah uh I, i i don't say that anywhere this trafficking has reduced i mean it's to comes to some extent when it comes uh, when we started with wildlife crime control bureau uh, whose intelligence network is spread across the country and we have the regional office in chennai and then we do have interaction with them so, uh, fortunately the the scale at which it was operating the trafficking is by and large by and large has reduced after the and death of the known uh, mafia in uh, especially tiger uh, poacher and all and the pradesh has taken up very important work of educating this uh, bavarias and uh, especially the tribes and then also weaning them off from the uh, poaching so that's how organized trafficking to a greater extent has reduced but still i would say that it is you know nil i cannot say because even today i still find uh, you know borders are porous and then wild animals as they do not have any boundary borders borders they keep moving out and then get poached and then today especially in karnataka if i see i am finding a serious threat with reference to the very important but lesser known species like uh, uh, we have the pangolins the pangolin scales are in the wildlife trafficking and we have water lizards which are also in the trafficking i do find lot of cases especially in chamrajnagar where i am working i am finding these two species are constantly under traffic and then uh, we have been finding poachers we have been catching and nothing but still it is on and today with this uh, internet and all it has become both difficult as well as easy we are able to trace them you know based on their web web uh, advertisement and all at the same time it has become easy for the people also to access to the wildlife products it's still there ragavendra but i don't say that it's, it has become zero but we are at it and we have fortunately a better we are better equipped today than before good job i i completely agree with you it's both it's reducing some it's increasing for various reasons you wouldn't believe i've been going to sweden or europe for almost 4 5 years now and continuously visiting all these uh, a uh, reptile shows when i say shows they'll sell and buy last year when i went there i saw malabar pit viper in one of the uh, reptile shows in netherlands you know malabar pit viper I was so proud that nothing of big snakes from india or particularly western ghats can go if you see king cobras are in uh, in uh, are uh, kept in captivity in europe and america most of them comes from the other southeast asia where they don't have restrictions from india it's very difficult sometimes i was told from indian borders it enters into bangladesh or nepal and from there goes into nepal and they get transported but no way they can go from all the way from western ghats because you know such a long uh, country we have they can't go but i was surprised to malabar pit viper in that rep like oh, where they selling yeah i agree with you gauri what is happening is our focus fortunately or unfortunately again i would like to use it is mostly on elephant and tiger exactly another reason why we are losing this kind of malabar pit vipers or for that matter as i said pangolins and then the you know, we need to yes. you know increase the scope of our you know radar radar exactly and uh, we all know it's a multi million dollar uh, network you know it's not easy to break it there is a yeah. network uh, Uh, of people working on it anyway i'm i'm sure we're all working towards it sir next question uh, aditya raj aditya raj is asking hi sir i would just like to know how we as individuals can create awareness that helps people build that emotional bond with nature on digital platform uh, wonderful hadi uh, actually i always believe in setting an example by ourselves you know many a times when we go i have seen when you go to educate people also especially adults it's very very difficult to educate them i found it quite easy to educate children and that's where i restricted myself to the children's education more than the adult education because educating adult requires a different kind of you know settings so you have to only give certain example by yourself say for example when i say certain example by yourself whenever you are going 
with your you know peers to any nature area even if they are throwing plastic don't tell them don't throw plastic just pick up that plastic and keep it in your pocket that will be more educating to them than you know asking them hey why are you throwing plastic take it that kind of thing one thing second thing is you you we do conduct especially in karnataka we have the nature uh, volunteers programs and nature guides programs they are fantastic programs if you can be part of that any of those programs and then you will you will get a hand, whole lot of information from us we are best of the resource persons and that you can use it as a, a kind of a background information to go to the different schools and educate in your own you know uh, backyard to the children and then uh, it 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 works it works i'm telling as i said i'm living in an apartment here other last time i took my, some of my apartment people to a butterfly park and then told them how butterflies you know the entire life cycle and other things i used the, our chief naturalist mr karthikeyan and then after we came back that entire our community management committee has changed the course of uh, you know treating garden now they don't apply any chemicals see that's how the we can need to change by taking them to frequently to the nature areas and then giving them the lectures and then setting example by ourselves i find setting example by ourselves is the best way to connect people good so vipin baliga says very moving and inspirational stories so thanks thanks vipin thank you so we have one more question from sneha darwadkar she works on pills uh, she says hello sir i wanted to ask you about your thoughts on post draft of the eia <laughs> 2020 and if there are any efforts from the fd forest department against regarding this and now this is the talk happening in the yeah, country yeah i agree and i i also am concerned with uh, what you are talking about uh, usually what happens in water impact assessment is a, a a wonderful tool actually whether you use it to your advantage or disadvantage is left to the project proponents basically uh, what i find folly in environmental impact assessment report itself is that the amount or the environmental impact assessment work as per the act need to be carried out by the project proponent this itself i find it is a is, is a folly in the sense you pay money as a project proponent to a institution or organization and then they do work for you obviously when you are paying money and then the report cannot be you know is usually it is not that uh, i am finding that's where the lacuna i have been interacting with the, my senior officers and then the uh, government of india that this particular methodology should change the environmental impact assessment report whatever the expenses happen should be paid by the government not the project proponent that's one thing and especially when you are talking about this uh, i'm sure you are talking about the hubli ankola railway line I mean, since you are from uh, possibly and then uh, it has its own uh, impact on the western ghats it has its own impact on the western ghats and then they still you know our uh, things are uh, with the, you know the government of india still has its own reservations and as you know the high court since it is in the court let me not be critical on this particular issue let us it become sub judice for me as a government servant to talk about but you can always you know i leave my contact details with the gauri you can always be in touch with me i can talk to you in detail uh, about that thank you sir yeah she is sneha says thank you wonderful talk very insightful and priyanka swami says couldn't agree more that we need to conserve just right yes the connection is missing so the next question is arundhati tiwari she is asking sir could you tell something about your experience on man animal conflict and how such issues are solved <laughs> uh arundhati i had i had served in madikeri and i am now serving in chamranagar both are highly human animal conflict areas and when i was serving in madikeri i had done a wonderful uh, you know i had a wonderful experience because i have seen 27 human deaths due to elephants in my tenure of 3 years and uh, my style of working as you have seen through my presentations is with the people i work with the people i don't you know disconnect myself with the people so when you when i work with the people the people become part of your solution rather than they become part of your problem many times what happens when we distance ourselves from the people the people become the part of your problem and then it becomes very very difficult and then to address this issue especially this is a serious issue 
so in madikeri what i did i involved people it means i made people as my equal partners in entire my efforts and that's how i could get enormous support from the public and also the people representatives and i have not done anything their great thing but i have put institution in place institution in place means uh there are a lot of issues i means this itself can be a topic for discussion next time but i'll briefly tell you involve yes. and then listen to them and then work with them and then this human element conflict can be minimized drastically as i said i have seen in 3 years 27 deaths after i left no another 3 years there are hardly six deaths so that's the achievement of involving people yes so i i completely agree uh, arundhati there are very few forest department officials who work with people you know they're always uh, busy with their paperwork or they keep themselves uh you know shut but uh, mr manoj is one of those forest officers who will work closely with uh, people and their wildlife and try to solve the problems and i'm sure many many other achievements which i know i don't want to mention right here because like i said we can have many discussions on many issues in future yeah good next uh, mr shantaram pai is asking you shetel in shimoga is key for movement of wildlife from southern to northern karnataka is there any effort to make it part of bhadra wildlife sanctuary to further protect flora and fauna uh shantaram actually i do not know the exactly what's happening now but shetel itself is a wildlife sanctuary so once it is a wildlife sanctuary and it is uh, adjoining the bhadra wildlife uh, bhadra tiger reserve rather so obviously it's a protected area as such and uh, there are issues with the shetelli reserve forest notification itself because i was there in hosnagara as a assistant conservator forest way back in 1999 i know that area to some extent now that uh, the notification which was done uh, during that time uh, has some you know lacuna in the sense the entire city part of the my shimoga city was also notified and there are a lot of issues in that area and uh, that is redefined now shetelli forest is re you know defined as a boundary but let me have a look at it and i am sure i mean uh, department must be doing something but as i have lost contact with the shimoga for quite some time now i won't be able to tell up front but both are protected area shetelli is also wildlife sanctuary and then uh, bhadra is also tiger reserve so obviously there must have been some connectivity but my problem was when i was in sirsi connecting bhadra with dandeli yeah. or simply that you know shimoga forest of shimoga with dandeli because there is a uh, sharavati tailors project sharavati dam and there is a very narrow neck you know kind of a chicken neck in between that need to be connected as i was telling initially when i said that elephants were not there in kenra that time they were coming from mysuru to kenra they were using this route today they, you don't find a movement of elephant from uh, kenra to mysuru or mysuru to kenra but still some elephant try to come up to shetelli and uh, you know sharavati then try to come to kenra but they won't be able to come because there is no connectivity this is what it is more important to connect you know shetelli uh, sharavati with the kenra forest Uh, than this Badra and then Shetty uh, because they I feel in in one way or the other way they are connected. Uh, I have to still see. Good, thank you, sir. That's good. So, Mr. Chandrakant Acharya is asking you what role can the forest department play when the government decides to go ahead with projects like like Hubali Karwa train line or Hubali Ankola. uh sir actually when i get whenever we are the government servants uh, we are certainly the abide i have to abide, we have to abide by the uh, wisdom of the government that particular time and then certainly some of uh, the department can always tell the pros and cons of uh, coming out with the project and that i am sure even in hubli karwar whatever leyland there the facts are put up they are there for anybody's you know observation and notice but when a government still decides to go ahead department cannot say anything because it's a larger wisdom of the government or the society the department becomes a uh, department technical department it can only put up its uh, views i i absolutely agree so we all can say things or put up our ideas or uh, uh, scientific things in front of them but overall like government has to take a overall decision Yes, we, as a department, forest department, we certainly think from the forest and environment point of view. But as a government, it has to think the larger uh, issue. So 
it, it's not that we simply keep on opposing anything, but our role becomes limited then once the government decides to go ahead with the project. Good. Sir, uh, Sangameshwar Talwar is asking, Sir, as you mentioned, there was no elephant population staying in Kodugu, but migrates from my region. No. Can you share a few thoughts about elephant, human, and animal conflict there related? Uh, there was some mis misunderstanding. Yeah. I did not tell that Kodugu, it was actually Canara. Canara, yeah. So, Canara is north, uh, Sangameshwar. Uh, Canada, Karwa district. I, what I meant was a Karwa district. Uh, what was happening is earlier there were not resident elephants in Karwar. They were coming from Mysuru. There was very defined migratory path, and they they are going back from Kendra. But what happened after this? You know, highway, railway line projects, and then the Sharawati, all those dams, everything came. Few elephants which left in Kendra remained there. Their population has now grown to 40-45. Now you have, you find only 40-45 elephants in Kendra. Unfortunately, these 40, 45 elephants have no connect with the larger population of uh, Mysore elephants or elephants from Badra or Shumaga. But you, every year they try, they try to go back, but they can't. So then uh, these elephants must have thought that their uh, no, compass readings are wrong. So they changed the compass readings and landed in Goa, can you believe? The Goa beaches. Then I had to send uh, no, my vets to uh, tie the elephant from Goa to again Dandeli. Then after that, they again changed their alignment and went to Maharashtra. Now, few elephants are there in Maharashtra. Uh, by and large, these elephants have become a disconnected population, a small population disconnected with the larger population by so. And then these forward elephants are having some human elephant conflict in Kendra also, but to a limited extent, to a tolerable limit, unlike Kodogu and all. Kodogu and Mysore are very well connected, the population keeps moving around. Yeah. So very relevant question, sir. What is the role of young generation in wildlife conservation other than forest stuff? Sir, whether you believe wildlife conservation is on the basis of community support? Yeah, that's uh, I fully point, agree, yeah. Naveen. I fully agree. And that's where the entire my 22 years of service I based on. Whether it was a protection and like you know, working with the poachers or working with the uh, timber smugglers, it really works. And younger generation, really I have a lot of work because I see cutting across their education background, be it a software engineer or be it an arts background or science background, everybody has some interest in nature today. And that's the future that I hope I have in the future. And then we do involve, we do involve youngsters, not to a larger extent, as of now we involve in this, our census programs like uh, elephant census, tiger census programs. And as I said, we do have the volunteer programs. So. Problem is, since we have our limited staff, when the youngsters come to work with us, unfortunately, we have to take care of them as well. Because it's not that we just let them go on their own and do work in the uh, forest. It's very, very difficult because the challenges are different. So that also puts the extra pressure on us. That's why we limit ourselves to a very minimum voluntary activities in our forest area. But if you're coming on your own, doing certain activities, we definitely welcome. A lot of officers now, they welcome the volunteers, especially fire season. I found tremendous support, some tremendous support from people. They come in their private vehicles with a lot of food and stuff, and then come and serve and help our uh, front-end staff. I'm seeing amazing you know, change of attitude in the youngsters, and that's the hope I have actually for future. Uh, Gauri, your, your voice is not audible. Now, looks like there are many, many, many questions, but if you're okay, you can go on for a few more minutes or... Yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Love, I love answering people. I know. There's a really interesting question, so I don't want to send them back, but it'll be good if you answer them. So, one question by Arundhati Tiwari, she's asking, what is your take on involvement of tribes in the conservation of forest area, forested area and wildlife? Uh, Arundhati, actually... I am, as I said, I am now presently working in a Chamra Nagar where I have the Soliga tribes, major Soliga tribes. Yeah. And most of my frontline staff, frontline staff like anti coaching staff, are tribes. And whenever I walk in the forest, I walk with them with a lot of confidence because they know the forest very well. Definitely, their role is of paramount importance for the conservation of forest. I have absolutely no two thoughts about it. And second, very important uh, area where our tribes are involved in forest pump is a uh, captive elephants. Most of our captive elephants are managed uh, by tribes. They know the art of you know, taming the elephants and then how to 
you know you know teach them the and then make them you know uh, you use them in the conservation works they are you know heart and soul of the forest management and wildlife management i have no two thoughts about it and then they are involved but there are a lot of things you know like you know there are other things happening like you know they want to be also come out in the uh, society and then be part of the larger society that's a different story but with their knowledge with their you kind know of involvement only we have been doing our you know core forest activities even today good one more interesting related to the same question how can we use people with tremendous knowledge and experience on a particular subject after they retire from forest department so as example a watcher who retired recently was an expert on the landscape the elephant movements in that area migration behavior any prospects prospects for employment i think somewhere connected to the previous yeah. question so you can actually uh, if you see especially in our frontline staff though the retirement age is 60 and all wherever they are fit they continue to work with us because they are basically on a very paltry salary and then after retirement also they get a very meager salary they do work with us they do work with us and then at least i have you know i keep taking the help of the retired uh, especially the wild animal uh, vets those who have worked in the wild animal vets and then uh, uh, especially uh, managing the elephants also i have taken the help of the retired employees when i was in mysore zoo they do come they do come and i have seen our retired officers beat watcher or the officers they are much fitter than anybody else so they can work even up to 70 years of their age and they do come they we do involve them good uh, vipin is saying uh, the same question this question is for gauri as well as and all the other related ngos but we agree same thing so we, we given a chance we always love to work with them and uh, because their experience you don't get that on google or anywhere it's not written it's there just there it get, i work with irula tribes most of the time i go out with them looking for snakes the amount of not have you don't get that anywhere else so yes vipin so because i am there it's always there is a snake related question but you can also answer this <laughs> so the, the need for this is from shaukat jamal one of my good friends the need for qualified snake rescues to be licensed by the forest department to operate more effectively each state forest department has its own policy or no policy at all in this regard can something be done about this maybe a centralized single window system to license rescue volunteers your view like we were uh, talking about animal human animal conflict not only elephants tigers snakes are immediately so please do answer so Yeah, so I I am with you in this particular aspect of you know having a effective and then efficient uh, system of you know having qualified snake rescuers. What happened? You know, we were actually some of officers went ahead with you know issuing ID cards and all. They were so much abused and misused, and we started getting you know even the video clippings and the newspaper reporting that this snake rescuer has gone and demanded this much. And uh, after releasing, if he is not giving the required amount, he said, "I he was threatening that I will release back into your house something like that." So then it became, it started becoming more and more uh, murkier and then dirtier. So we stopped it because we also do not have uh, experts in our department so that we can really assess. So maybe I'm I'm sure the department is having this in mind, but they have not taken it seriously. Uh, at least let me have another so i do have another 10 years of service for sure but with the help of like gauri and others who are really qualified as well as the they have scientific background so with their experts sitting in our arena bone as a you know like interviewers or maybe you know thing we may come out with a, a very defined and then objective policy of giving you know a license or the kind of permit to rescue especially the volunteers now, i agree yeah. very much you know like uh, in un unorganized today uh, but we yes it is it is yeah tell me about it. i know each and everything happening in bangalore or other even other countries have the same issue not only our country southeast asia country has but in our country compared to any other state karnataka is doing much much better we don't have people playing with snakes and posting it on uh, youtube or wherever you know or social media so it's much controlled but yes systematically running it uh, it's very important but 
department has much much bigger problems than these so what priority wise falls in. and yes i have done uh, workshops with in dandeli i did sir in 2014 yeah. i think i nagarole before i did badra i did again so we keep doing it uh, we are we working but it's a bigger problem we are talking about anyway thanks shaukat uh, sedu sedu lakshmi hello sir what are the measures taken by the department to prevent forest fires man made natural like the one what happened in bandipur 2 years ago george bangalore uh just actually uh there is no natural fire fire in our state at least or in country as such i can admit but in karnataka there is nothing called natural forest fire it's all man made and bandipur forest fires actually two years back what happened was uh, it was a very bad fire incident and then we really lost a huge area in the forest fires and uh, now it is what we are seeing i don't know whether i should link it to the climate change as well because two fires which i have seen in bandipur when i was in dandeli or i mean the madikeri also had seen fires fire it was also very bad and then this last year, two years back also was quite bad we are finding we have studied when we studied this uh, you know that particular time the wind velocity the humidity and temperature was deadly combinations and that was the time when this particular people who take to take revenge of the uh, with the department put fire becomes uncontrolled other by and large we are able to control forest fires not that uh, we are equipped we have the manpower we have the of course we now the we are taking the help of the fire, fire department also we are depositing some 50 lakh rupees every year in the department so that they put their you know men and material at the disposal for officers but bandipur was a classic case classic case in the sense what happened uh, there is use there the village close by has then a tiger straying into that area and many times when we go for rescuing we do have an altercation with the people you know people start talking something uh, abusing our department then we said we are doing something for the society not for ourselves something like that there was some altercation and in the process i think two or three people were also booked uh, cases uh, on on them they were waiting for this opportunity and then whenever a person with this ill intention goes into the forest he will not put fire at one location he will put fire at one kilometer distance for at least four five locations and by the time we come to know about this fire it will be like in you know, a late evening and then uh, when we put one fire and another one starts another one starts and then that all it became very very uh, difficult as i said there was also a climatic conditions which are very conducive for this fire to really become a no like a wild fire we couldn't control otherwise to be honest with you we we don't sleep during that time no officer sleeps peacefully during that fire season we are really committed as far as the forest fires are concerned good so uh, prasad says thank you for uh, sir for a very inspiring talk we thank ksri for such good initiatives and uh, there are few more questions uh i think uh, it's when you have uh, discussions like this for more than 45 minutes people also do focus so i believe in that we have to keep it short and uh, we will definitely have mr manoj kumar again for a different uh, topic because he has so much to share and i know we have so many questions to be answered and there are very few people in the forest department uh, who are willing to talk to people like i already mentioned and manoj kumar is this person who is always there to share his knowledge and uh, i i hope i i am thinking we have to stop here and these questions i will send it across to mr manoj kumar he will type it across so we will by email we will let you know but uh, it's no having this and keeping the live uh, session for a long time anything which is nice we have to end it and uh, sir we will send these questions to you uh, sure, sure. i'm happy some the basic questions we ourselves the case here on your behalf we will answer and send it across to them and we always make sure get the answers from experts yeah so thank you thank you very much i really appreciate for your time and i hope the uh, listeners enjoyed this session and uh, this live one is recorded and we will be reposting again on our uh, case here uh, youtube channel and uh, facebook and if you are interested any time please write to us we will send you and please do uh, listen to the talk and if you have any questions 
write to us or write to Mr. Manoj Kumar. Thank you very much. We appreciate uh, the listeners. Uh, a week, day, they're still there. We have like oh, close to 50 people watching us. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thanks, very. Thanks for the wonderful opportunity. Enjoy it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it, it's, it's good. It's always good to talk to people and tell them what exactly happening, you know, instead of them reading something on some WhatsApp message. So to catch up with you once the pandemic settles down or hope we'll bump into each other in, in any talks or anything. Now I think now I think we should you should deal. Sir? Sorry, I, uh, I think we lost him there. Good. I think I will catch up with uh, Mr. Manoj Kumar later. Guys, have a nice day. Thank you very much.